You ever wonder why pancakes are called pancakes when cakes are actual cakes and pancakes look like pancakes? Pancakes are really smaller than cakes. I don't know why they... Hey guys, welcome back to Spike. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at this dang pancake situation. I'm joking, guys. Um, we're taking a look at uh, motion blur and understanding motion blur because it uh, can be something that's a little tricky. Um, and we're going to get started today. We have this ball here, and if, you can, if I play this animation, you can see that this ball is kind of zooming. Look at it. It's going whoosh, you know? Over and over again. It's just whooshing, you know? It's just going crazy right now. It's it's It drank some energy fuel, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. Now you can see if I pause this in the middle, which is on frame five, because it's only zero through 10. On frame five, that's the middle of the, the frame, basically, almost. Um, and I'm gonna turn on motion blur over here on this uh, main panel, which is the render properties uh, panel, obviously. I'm gonna go ahead, and go ahead and turn motion blur on. Now, if we turn motion blur on, you can see that when I open it up um, and we render a frame, I'm gonna render this out and uh, I'm gonna show you guys by going to rendering. You can see it looks like this. So the background's uh, purple, the subject's white. Now, if I turn motion blur off, you can see that it will just look uh, will just look regular, like um, like this. So this is what it looks like without motion blur. It's just literally just a circle. That's it on a purple background. But if we turn back on motion blur, of course, it looks like what we just saw. Now, there's a couple options over here. We have position, we have stutter, background separation, motion blur, uh, max blur, sorry, and steps. So essentially, you're only really gonna wanna take a look at shutter and steps. Um, so the, the crazy thing is, oh, maybe Max Blur as well, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so basically what this is, is stutter, is pretty much the time in between frames. So um, essentially what motion blur is, is trying to replicate when you see something move fast in real life. Um, and it does that by making it so that cameras work, because it's motion blur, because there's time in between frames. And then they, the camera blurs it together because, you know, it it doesn't know what was in between. So it just blurs it, um, which is what motion blur is, essentially, in a very basic format. So the shutter kind of is acting like a camera shutter speed and making it so that when you render a frame, it kind of mixes the frames together so that it's not just like, you know, ghost image of the last frame on top of the new one, if that makes sense. Um, so if we go ahead and change the shutter speed, um, way way down to 0 0.01 and render this you can see that we'll oh wait, i i messed up um you can see that uh it will basically look no different because you can see it it doesn't really have any time in between frames at all so it's just like instantly rendering the next uh the next image so just putting it on top of it um, now, if we go back and we turn the shutter speed all the way up to 1, you can see that when we go ahead and render this now, that it is way, way more blurred. Uh, uh, rendering? Thank you. Way more blurred. As you can see, it's still really low poly, though. Well, not low poly, but low resolution. We'll get into that in a second. But if we go back to layout, you can see that we can turn up the max blur, which is essentially how big the blur can be, obviously. So it's 32 pixels right now, but if we turn this all the way up to 512 and give this a render, it'll look like it'll look like this, which is much smoother, which is much, 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 hello. Why is it not showing up? Thank you. Much smoother, obviously. So you can see the difference in that. And the reason it was really, really low quality is because it's only on 32. Now it's on 512. So it's really, really smooth now. Maybe a little too smooth, actually, but it's really smooth now. The last thing I want to talk about um, is uh, the steps. So we've we've tackled the shutter speed. We've tackled the max blur. Um, the background separation is not too big of a deal. It's it's kind of just like it, on the parts that are motion blurred, it will try to blend the background with the uh, actual foreground and the thing that's being motion blurred, if you will, <laughs> um, together. So it's going to try and mer merge them together to make them look a little bit better. Um, depending on how high or how low you set this. So if you set it, I'm pretty sure if you set it, uh, set it further down, then it blends the background with the actual motion blurred object a little bit better. But um, because the background's purple and because it's just a circle, you won't really be able to see a difference. But yeah, so just play around with that setting if you have like a really detailed background or a really detailed foreground. Um, and it kind of mixes the motion blur in a little bit better, depending on the value you use. It's, the default is 100. So um the steps is a really 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 big thing so let's take a look at the steps real quick i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna turn the max blur back down to maybe something small like 64. yeah okay so the steps this is the part that kind of makes um things take a little longer while you're rendering which can be very upsetting but the steps are very necessary so if i turn this to 12 you can see if i render this once again 
and then play it. Oh, you're not see much of a difference. Let's actually go ahead and turn the shutter to 0.5 and let's get a different object other than uh, Q. Let's get a Suzanne. Let's get Suzanne in here so you can see a little bit, a little bit more detail on this uh, object. Go ahead and just add that smooth shading real quick. We'll go from here to maybe frame 20 and then we'll do it up here. Okay, there we go. Super fast still, as you can see. So let's pause it somewhere and give it a nice little render. Um, I didn't give it a material. That's my fault, guys. You know, hold on, it's, it's going to be great. Let's actually give it a material that isn't emission. Let's add a lamp really quickly. You can see that the stutter, well, the, the, sorry, the stutter, the um, shutter, not just stutter, the shutter frames is going to give it a, a, a more of a ghosty-like image. Um, let me turn this lamp up real quick so you can see. There we go. That's a little bit better. And we'll maybe put one down here as well. Suzanne is really looking good today, you know? I just want to make sure she knows that. Um, she's, yeah, nice. Looking good. All right. So the shutter, the shutter speed is on 0.5 and the steps is on 12. The steps is basically how many um, how many of the items you want to motion blur you're going to see. So instead of seeing three of them and then them trying to blend three, they'll add 12 and they'll blend 12 images together. Um, so it's it's more high resolution. It's 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 better. It's smoother, I suppose, as it were. Um, so let's go ahead and let's turn the shutter speed all the way up. Let's turn the max blur to 16, actually, just so you can get a feel for this. And let's turn the steps to three or something. Um, now you can see this is much less smooth. Um, if I were to go ahead and show you this, if it's much less smooth than it previously was before. Um, let's go ahead and turn these steps to. Let's see what one looks like again. Let's go back to one. Oh, there you go. So look at one. So this is one. <laughs> um, let's do three. Oh, I missed. This is three. Okay. And then if we go all the way up to, let's say, 64. Let me actually I just switch that. 64, you can see that it looks like that, which is not much of a difference, really. But see, I, I'd say I'd say probably 12 was a really good place to sit. Um, if, you're, if your renders are taking too long, I maybe go down to uh, maybe half of that. Do maybe six. Six. I can't spell. There you go. All right. I do six um, anything under uh, I think it starts changing it maybe three I think you can probably get away with three if it's just really simple motion blur but anything under three probably not the best idea to do um, but yeah so it's kind of a combination of all these different things um, like I said center on frame is uh... okay so if you wanted this the, the position is basically where you want the motion blur to start from Essentially, so if you hover over this, it says offsets the shutter and uh, shutter's time interval allows to change the motion uh, blur trails. So essentially, um, center on frame is going to give you left to right, and then start on frame is going to give you just, I believe, the left or the right. I can't remember which side. Let's actually give it a render. Take a look. There you go. Okay, so you see how it's much different now. There's more motion blur in the back instead of in the front. It's kind of like lopsided now. And if you do end on frame, you can see if we render this, it is now exactly the opposite. So it's more in the front than in the back, which doesn't make that much sense. I can't lie. Um, but uh, start on frame is definitely good. I recommend just leaving it on center on frame, um, which does left and right hand sides when it motion blurs, which is kind of how things work in real life. But um, start on frame also works because I feel like a lot of the times you see um, motion blur or trails off of the, the back of something, which is exactly what start on frame is. It will put more trails on the back hand side, which is very cool. But I recommend once again, just leaving it on center on frame because it looks, just looks good and it works perfectly. So hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed. That's basically it. Hope you learned something new today. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.